It's timely. It's insightful. It's motivating. It's empowering. It's time with Fred, your inspirational broadcast with host Fred Gaddy. Hello, and thanks for tuning in to another edition of the Time with Fred podcast. This is a podcast that challenges the paradigms and mindsets that hold us back. With me today as a special guest on this podcast is Sharon Costanza, who joins us via Zoom from Utah. Sharon is a relationship coach, mentor, and educator who helps us navigate the common conflicts and challenges that most couples face. I'm sure you'd agree with me that communication is one of those things that we often take for granted, but if we're not intentional about how we communicate, we've seen a lot of relationships destroyed and um, just, just a lot of bad things happen um, as a result of um, an ill-timed phrase or communication or just not putting some thought, enough thought into how we say things and what we say. So we have the expert here, Sharon, to walk us through some of the steps and why it's important for us to be intentional about our communication. So Sharon, thanks for coming on the podcast today. Thank you, Fred. I'm very excited to talk to you today. The pleasure is all mine, Sharon. So, so Sharon, why is it important for us to give any thought at all to, to communication? I mean, is it not... And we just say what pops into our head. Yeah. Like it is. You hear people say, I'm just going to say it like it is and let the chips fall where they Oh, that that's... sometimes those chips just come back and bite us in, in so many painful places, right? So, well, why yeah. is that really important, Sharon? For sure. I love it how you said that because that's such a common phrase, especially I think men loved, well, men and women. Uh, usually somebody with a more like a more forceful personality says, oh, I just say it like it is. And a lot of times they don't have any, any idea how they're coming across to other people and how the rea- the reality that they have is not a shared reality. And so I think that's one of the very first things with communication is to recognize that there are multiple realities going on at the same time. And so, and you, what prompted you to um, to do what you do in terms of you know helping coach people, guide people, especially in, in relationships? Yeah. So I um, I have a lot of personal experience with this. I grew up in a family like most of us do, where maybe healthy communication wasn't necessarily modeled. I think um, both of my parents would probably say that they they felt like the other person. <laughs> got more of their way than they did. And I think that's so common. We think, oh, you know, we're fighting to get our way instead of fighting to understand each other and to create a shared meaning. So I grew up, you know, kind of with that paradigm where things weren't really talked about in a healthy way. And then I got married and I wanted something different for my relationship, but I didn't know how to create it. And I, especially, I, I wanted to have more equality as far as gender equality in our relationship. And so I was kind of with this mindset of, I want to fight the patriarchy, so to speak. You know, I don't want to take a a backseat to my husband and his opinions all the time. I don't want to be the one who is the default caregiver, the default housekeeper, you know, the person who holds everything all together without ever having my opinions being heard. And so I'm, I'm trying to navigate this without any tools. And um, pretty soon, my husband and I just were in this relationship that we weren't really very happy. Um, He felt like he was constantly being criticized, and I felt like I was constantly being dismissed. And um, we got to the point where neither one of us was sure that we wanted to be married anymore. And um, so we we got to that point, and luckily we both decided that we wanted to put in the work to to figure out our relationship and figure out how to do things differently. And so we really have developed a much different routine of how we talk through things and and how we discuss things. And we are both pretty strong willed people, so our dynamic is maybe different than what other people might figure out for themselves, but. Um, you know, how can you say what needs to be said or what's on your heart and work through it and still feel like friends at the end of the day. And I, I've just come as I figured that out for myself and my husband and I have figured out how to do that within a, within our relationship. It's also been really surprising for me to see 
um, how my professional relationships have changed so much. And I just feel so much more at ease in my career and I feel just more respected and those relationships just go a lot smoother. And it's all because of this, just this different approach to communicating needs, communicating opinions, working through conflict, um, that, that, that has changed for me. And I, when I started my podcast, I called it the keep talking revolution because I, I see so often we, we do the way that we communicate is a way to stop the communication. You know, we blow up to try and overpower the person we're talking to. We shut down, you know, maybe we try and appease, we try and they call it the fawn response. You know, I'll just give you whatever you want as long as you're not mad at me anymore. Or we just say this relationship isn't worth it anymore. And we walk away. So my, my kind of hypothesis or my, My challenge to people is keep talking until you figure it out, Mm -hmm. slow things down. Um, And there's a lot of relationships that can be saved if we just learn how to communicate better and understand each other. Oh, I bet. I bet. And Sharon, I'm not, you're the expert here. I'm not, I'm not sure what the stats are, but I wonder what percentage of relationships go south because of communication. Do do you have any stats on that? Oh, I think it would be really hard to say commute because communication really is like an all encompassing thing, you know? Um, so that's a really hard, that's a really hard thing to say, but you know, there are some statistics that I do know. I do know that I'm a Gottman relationship educator, so I'm well-versed in Gottman's research and what he's found from, you know, 40 plus years of studying relationships is in about 60% of relationships, men are really hesitant to accept their wife's influence. Mm. And that is very destructive to relationships. You know, if your wife comes to comes to you with something and you're very dismissive, Mm. you know, that's very destructive. Um, So that's kind of 60% of relationships are impacted by that. We also have a 60% divorce rate. So that, that could be a big, a big part of it. You know, if you're not feeling heard, usually what happens is you get louder or you go silent Mm -hmm. and neither one of those things creates a healthy relationship. Yeah. You, you touched on, um, I mean, drawing from your own personal example there, when you have two parties or, you know, husband and wife who are both strong willed here, right. How do you find that balance? Yeah. So for us, I think it's, um, it's a willingness to kind of slow down and take a step back. And when things do get heated, which they do still, even though we're both much better at, at dealing with conflict, um, when you get to a place where, where you are heated, rather than continuing the conversation, you call a healthy break is what I call it. You know, let's take a time out and take some time to, to calm our emotions. So you have to take responsibility for seeing that, you know, when you're in that high emotional state. Uh, you can't have a productive conversation with someone. So taking a break from that conversation and coming back to it. And when we do that, we always have a better conversation (laughs) the next time we come, come back to it. So the, the point there also, Fred is, and I, I like to point this out, especially to women, because we're always trying to think of the perfect way to bring things up. So let's just imagine there is no perfect way to bring things up and the person you're talking to could respond badly, no matter how perfectly you bring things up. Part of this communication, the skills is how do you get back on track when things do fall off track? Cause you are going to say the wrong thing or you are going to be misunderstood. Yeah. And, and that, that makes it even more complex, right? I think that was leading up to my question. I mean, Given the statistics that you shared were, you know, 60% um, of men, right, at, you know, dominating that conversation there. How, mm-hmm. how does, how do women, right, find the perfect way to, to share their thoughts, right, without feeling dismissed by their male counterparts? Or because it always sounds like, you know, he's going to have his way 
you know, in, in most of those cases, right? So how does a woman there, um, again, we're talking, you know, gender differences here. How, how do you get, how do you get your, your opinion across and not feeling like you're being dismissed all the time? Yeah, I think part, part of the, the kind of trick to this is it's not necessarily about getting your point across because, um, you know, if that's your objective for your point to be, to be accepted, um, I'm trying to think of the best way to say that, say this. So, so you're trying to get your point across. Um, I think the goal, I, what I would say the goal would be rather than trying to get your point across is let's have a conversation where both of our views, there's room for both of our views in this conversation. And a lot of times, um, I just shared this in my Facebook group. I have a Facebook group for women. A lot of times, um, we just need to, to slow down our response. So maybe, maybe we bring something up and we feel that pushback and maybe if we don't take that pushback quite as seriously as it sounds, you know, you could, you could say what I heard was, you think I'm an idiot. Maybe <laughs> what I heard was, is that really what you meant? And a lot of times men just, they're just getting a gut check resisting, but that's not what they mean either. They, they want to have a good conversation. They want to have an open conversation, but they're just in a habit of resisting to get. So if you can slow down and say, Hey, I feel a little bit of resistance here. Is that, is that what you meant by that? You know, it sounds to me like you're saying that you're right and I'm wrong, but maybe there's more to it. What is it? So slowing down and being really curious about it, um, being a little bit, you know, not getting too loud, but not getting too quiet either. Just if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. I, I think what I was trying to get at is maybe not getting the point of pros, but just getting the other person to listen, right? I mean, yeah, we, we often hear, we think we're listening, but we're not listening. It's different. Oh, it's different for sure. Hearing, right. And then, and then listening. Yeah. That's really where, you know, the, the challenge is, right? I mean, you're, you're, they're just not there. The other person is just yeah. disengaged, right? Could it be timing? Could it be stress? I mean, I'd imagine there are so many factors that, that impact that, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 And I think another thing, if that, if that's the point, if you just want to be heard is starting the conversation by asking for permission to have the conversation. Hey, I want to have a conversation with you about something that's important to me. Is this a good time? A lot of times, I mean, all of us do this. I, I still do it. I, I know the rules, right? <laughs> Cause I've been at it long enough, but I'm still a human. If I can slow down and be, and say, is this a good time to talk about this? Um, and you bring it up. And then if again, it's, it, it might not be a single conversation. It might be something that you bring up and you, you talk about it a little bit and you don't quite get where you want to go, but you can see that, you know, that, the capability to have that conversation at that time has expired. So you come back to it. And that's again, what this whole keep talking philosophy is about is a lot of times we do, we want something to get resolved in a single conversation mm -hmm. and we're just, neither one of us is really prepared to flesh everything out in a single conversation. So we start talking about it. And sometimes even I'm sure men do this too, but women, we start talking about something and we get halfway through the conversation and now we're, we have another person we're bouncing ideas off of. And we realize that what we thought we wanted at the beginning of the conversation isn't actually what our core like objective is. You know, we might be asking like a lot of times, this is a really common dynamic. You know, we want our husband to stop playing video games because we feel ignored. And so that's the, uh, you're playing way too many video games. <laughs> You've been on the computer for six hours or whatever it is. You need to stop doing that. And really, once you start talking through it and you start thinking about what you really want, you just want to feel important to your husband. I, I had a coaching call with someone recently, and this was the topic here was talking about video games. And I said, what would make you feel okay about him playing video games for six hours? And she said, if we went on a date every week and I had that like two hours of his undivided attention, 
then it wouldn't bother me anymore. So, you know, getting to the core of what it is that we really want and what it is that we're looking for usually takes more than one conversation to figure out. Yeah. Great point. Is there, I've heard it said that it's not what you say, Sharon, but it's, it's how you say it. And you have people who are quick to defend the fact that, well, I can't mince words. I can't sugarcoat stuff. I just say like it is. Is there any oh. question at all in, 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 in flexing or in, in reframing there? And people say, you know, that there's just a lot of thought. I mean, why don't you just say it? I can't finesse it. You know, I, I just yeah. say it like that. But I've also seen instances where the how is important, right? Oh, I mean, for in the sure. Plays as a leader, it's, it's all about the how. Yeah. Thoughts about that. So I do. I, I, I agree with that. I, I think sometimes we get into this, well, they didn't bring it up the right way. So I have no responsibility in this conversation anymore. So we want, we definitely want to avoid that um, being maybe overly critical of how people bring things up um, and acknowledging that they're, they're human, but definitely I think, and this brings up a point, it, it goes both ways. I like the, the principle it has a lot of different terms, but the, the principle is called charitable interpretation. And it's just assuming that everyone is acting in a reasonable and rational way. Everyone has good reasons for the things that they do. And if we, you know, if we really were to walk a mile in their shoes, then what they were doing would make sense. Some and level of empathy there, right? some level, yeah, some level of empathy. We're at a point in our culture right now where we do not do that very well. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we, we become so polarized that it's like, how, how could somebody not agree <laughs> and see things the way that I see them? But when we, when that comes into our personal relationships, you know, if we, if we come to our partner with something and we, we want something to change and we are assuming that their intentions towards us are less than charitable or, you know, they're trying to take advantage of us or that colors the conversation in that way. And so it, without even, without even thinking about the words that we use, it, it changes how our words come across. So I think, um, you know, more important than the words that we use is the assumption that we have about the people that we're dealing with. Are we assuming that they're, you know, trying to love and support yeah. us or are we assuming that they're trying to take advantage of yeah. us or assuming best intent right yeah yeah absolutely. how about the issue of timing um sharon how, how important is that and i when i say timing you know when to say what right if say you know you're someone is super stressed or you know dealing with so many competing priorities that may not necessarily be the time to, you mm-hmm. know, to talk to them about you know what they're not doing right right because it only yeah. just makes them more defensive right and which is mm-hmm. why i think this whole communication thing is an art i mean it, oh for sure right? as simple as simplistic as we think it is it's it's an art what importance does uh does timing play or the element of timing play in in communication you think oh i think it plays a it plays an important role for sure i think um in addition to timing i think like a lot of times we have a way of kind of approaching things from a negative you know i'm i'm asking for something negative to stop instead of i'm asking for something positive to happen So a lot of times, and I shared this, I had a great guest on my podcast and she called it sharing a positive need, Mm -hmm. you know, like, so if we go back to the the video game example, you know, you could say, Hey, I want to talk to something. I want to chat with you about something. I just have this idea. Do you remember when we were first dating and every Friday night we would get together and we would go to dinner and we'd have such a good time together and we'd hang out with friends. And do you remember just how like connected and in sync we felt and, and, um, and how exciting that time was for us. I'd really love for us to start planning more time like that together. Could we, could we figure out how to fit that into our schedule? 
You're not even saying stop playing video games. You're not even saying anything negative. You're just saying, Hey, I want things to be better between us. And this is what it looks like. And when you, when you approach things in that way, where you're inviting somebody to be more connected with you, the timing is way less important because you're not, (laughs) you're not giving them, you're not giving them something negative to focus on. You're giving them something, a positive way to interact with you. Or you could totally botch that conversation by saying it in an entirely different way. You're irresponsible. Yeah. All you do is just sit in your butt and play video games and that, and then just esca- that just mm-hmm. escalates, right? And it becomes, it becomes totally, totally. So yeah, I, I, I yeah. think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. So what if it's, you know, one person, one party just tries everything they can and another person just, it's just not getting it, Sharon. <sighs> That's a good, uh, like, like not getting not what you're trying to, to say, not willing, not, willing. To it's just not, you know, just not, not being open, you know, it's just, yeah, I think I was thinking about this today. I think, and just how relationships go a lot of times we're not doing as good of a job communicating as we think we are. So I think if you get to that point and you feel like I, you know, somebody's just not getting what I'm saying, you know, my partner doesn't feel willing to really do the work. I, a lot of us wait way too long to get professional help with our relationships than we should. And getting a third party in there to help you see what maybe you're not seeing is really helpful. Um, again, I'll go back to Gottman just because like I said, that's, that's who I've done most of my training with, or a lot of my relationship training with one of the studies that they cite very often is, is that couples wait six years too long to get professional help. And so that, you know, I would say get some professional help. If you feel like you're in a spot where, where you're not getting across what you need to get across. Uh, my husband and I were in a, were in a situation similar to that, where I just felt like I was doing everything that I possibly could. And I told my husband, you know, I just can't do this anymore with you. (laughs) And he was like, okay. And, um, I don't think this relationship is going to work then because you're just not happy. And so we, we did, we got some professional help. We've done that quite a few times over the course of our relationship. Um, so I would just say, it's not a lost cause. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It, it's good. It's a lot. What was I going to say? I think um, a lot of times when we start to grow and change our behavior, the results that we see, it takes longer than we think it should take, mm-hmm. but it doesn't, it's not going to last forever. Yeah. And, and it's part of it's part of the sacrifice, right? You gotta, yeah. you, gotta you gotta stick with it. Yeah. Yeah. Another important point, Sharon, is is that of conflict, right? In in relationships. Um, and you could say both ways. There are those who just try to avoid conflict as much as possible because they don't want to rock the boat, right? Oh yeah. And I've heard that sometimes conflict is healthy. It's necessary to be able to talk through or to express some of those emotions versus just bottling them or avoiding them because they always find ways of seeping back somehow. Um, yeah. Those ways, right. So uh-huh. how do you perceive uh, the topic of conflict really? Or, or why is, is it even important um, in relationships? Is it healthy? Is there any, is there any such thing as healthy conflict in relationships? Yes. So the way I, I think it, it's very important the way we define conflict. So I, my definition of conflict is just difference between two people. Right. You know, we all have differences. Uh, We're not the same. The only way to get to the real, to get to a really meaningful and deep, satisfying relationship is to understand the conflict, to understand how, understand and accept how your partner is different from you. And when you start to see that as a strength, you know, when you slow down and take time in conflict to talk through what's going on for you and how you see things and what's important from your perspective, and you give your partner space to do that as well, that's where the more 
intelligent solutions come from. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times we're so eager to get to a quick compromise because we want the pain of the conflict to go away that we end up with compromises that neither one of us really feels very happy with. But if you start to talk through, I had another client and they're working on a remodel right now. They're remodeling the rental house. And she was telling me like, we got it. We figured out how to do a brainstorm and, and figure this out better than we've ever done it before because she could hear, oh, well, you know, I don't think that this is going to work for these reasons. And this is what's most important to me. And he did the same thing. And they came up with something that neither one of them could have come up with on their own. That's the beauty of conflict when you do it well. And you kind of give up your opportunity to do that if you just avoid conflict. Just giving up that, uh, that, right to be to be right all, all the time right? yeah um, you know it's interesting you talked about um understanding here and and i i remember when my wife and i got married we took um this assessment i think the five love languages by gary chapman you oh know with that yeah um and we took it again recently and what was interesting um sharon is that our needs when we took it around the time we got married are completely, completely different from mm -hmm. fast forward 17 years um, into the relationship. Yeah. And it was interesting because what we thought excited us back then or what we thought were important to us back then have flipped completely. And it wasn't, it was such an eye opener, Sean, because we, we, we now had to adjust, you know, with the new assumption, with the new understanding of what matters to each person now, having to readjust how we meet those needs versus assuming that the things that were important 17 years ago are the same things, but they've completely changed, right? Whether it's the experience, whether it's competing priorities or just, you know, marriage, kids or, or, or whatever, they all these factors that come into play. And, and, and as we age and as we, grow in, in that relationship these things change right and, and so it, mm -hmm. I, and I had a few of our friends took it and they realized that they were experiencing the same things so, oh so I for think sure there's, there's some emotional intelligence there when it comes to even understanding the needs of our of our spouses partners friends whatever even kids because there's a version of kids and we had to make our our kids take them to just so we can understand how we relate to them. And I think it's really important to know as things change that we need to ad adapt and adjust and not assume that the way things were five, 10, 15, 20 years ago are the way things are right now. Does that, does that, does that make sense? Oh, definitely. Yeah. We, we need to keep getting to know our partner because yeah. they do, they change, you know, we've, we've had so many changes over the past couple of years and, you know, with the pandemic, we've, had so many new situations come up where our priorities have shifted and our views on the world have shifted. And we need to keep updating the information that we have about our partner. One of the questions that I love um, that Gottman recommends, he recommends this, you know, doing like a relationship inventory every week, talking to your partner. And one of the questions that he recommends that you ask is what can I do to make you feel loved and supported this week? Like, what if we asked our partner that every single week and it would change, you know, we would keep that information updated rather than being like, well, when I started dating this person, you know, for you, it was 17 years ago. For me, it was 10 years ago when we started dating, this is what we liked and who we were, yeah. but we're not those people anymore. Yeah. yeah. And even when it comes to intimacy, right? The things that we think interests our spouses are not, yeah. not the same things that interests them now. So I think it's just a, it's such a complicated um, landmine, if you will, right? Which requires yeah. intentionality. Uh, well, so and what, I, what, yeah, go, I'm sorry, go ahead. I would say like a long-term relationship is such a, it's our greatest opportunity to develop our emotional intelligence because we do, we have so many challenges that come up of, trying to keep working it out with the same person over and over again. Um, but we have such an opportunity. Yeah. 
to just continue to grow and become smarter relational beings. Yeah, absolutely. Here, what are some of the resources that you recommend? I mean, I, I know you talked about Gottman, but are there any other resources that, that you recommend um, or any assessments oh. that um, readily come to mind that that can be helpful in helping? Yeah, us so I, I teach a course that's based on Gottman's seven principles for making marriage work. Mm-hmm. And there are really, there are relationship educators all over the U S who teach that course. It's a great course. There's a curriculum that goes along with it that takes you through those seven principles with your partner. There's a workbook that goes along with it. So that's a really cool resource because a lot of times what we need as couples is we need like some committed set aside time to sit down and do this work. And we don't usually do that on our own. So uh, getting in a Gottman course or some other type of relationship course is really helpful because it commits you to that ongoing growth. And there's something about that accountability, you know, when the couples are like, oh, I'm going to be in class next week. And I, I don't want to be the one person who's like, oh, we didn't, we didn't do the homework or whatever. So it's kind of fun to have something like that. There's tons of great books. There's tons of great podcasts. Um, Anything else that I really love an assessment or something. (sighs) I can't think of anything specifically off the top of my head, but, but your website does have uh, some of these resources, right? You want to share? Yes. Your yep. your yeah. My website. And I, like I said earlier, I host a, a Facebook community. It is a women's Facebook community. So, um, so that's a Facebook community for women. What is it called? It's called keep talking community. Okay. And, um, I have my podcast, which is called keep talking revolution. And that can kind of point people in the different directions for resources. I interview a lot of other Gottman professionals and other relationship professionals as well. So there's lots of good stuff going on there. Awesome. And as we kind of wrap up here, Sharon, one of the things that I like to do is to, is to, is to make this a little personal. I mean, we've talked about some Mm -hmm. of the challenges in, in communications and I have no doubt Sharon that, there's probably someone listening to us right now who may be going through some really hard times in their either their relationship, their marriage, or um, just just can't figure it out. Maybe they just can't get their views across. Maybe they're avoiding co- whatever wherever that may be, right? Um, mm-hmm. And I want you to speak to that person right now. Just 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 talk to them, wh- whatever they may be experiencing and maybe some words of encouragement, uh, maybe something to lift them up a little bit. Uh, however, however you feel, however you feel it, go for it. Yeah. I guess what I would say is I, I think about my, my daughter is a very creative child. You know, if I let her have free range where there's tape and glue and glitter and markers and, mm-hmm. and all of that stuff, And that's the way our relationships are as well. I think communication can be a very creative process and creativity when it's done well, it's very messy. And so I would say, just be really patient with that mess. You know, that's a lot of our, our challenge as moms, (laughs) we're always trying to control the messes, right? And I think sometimes just let the mess unfold and see see what happens as that mess just unfolds. Hmm. I love that. I love that. I hadn't thought about it that way because I can relate to some of the things you were saying um, there with, with our, with our children who are, who are very creative, but, but, but I love that. And one of the things that also stood up, uh, stood out to me, Sean, earlier when you mentioned is, is, is getting help, right? Cause sometimes we, we try to figure it out and it, we just get to that point where it's yeah. like, hey, hell, don't try. To well, do and there's so much shame, so much unnecessary shame yeah. from not being able to figure these things out. Like we, we just didn't come <laughs> programmed with all of those tools. So there's no, there's no shame in getting help. And, and sometimes you have to try a few times before you find the right the right helper. But so if you go and the first, the first thing you try doesn't quite get you where you need to be, then that's just one tool in your toolbox and just keep adding those tools. And until you feel like you're at a a good spot. 
that's awesome. Sharon, thank you so much for coming on the podcast and, and talking about one of the most important things, really, um, that, that impacts impacts everything, and, and that's you know, relationships. Uh, you've shared some very powerful lessons that I, I think our listeners would find helpful. I, I did, and I trust that if you're listening, that you find this helpful as well. And if you do, as I always say, would appreciate it if you're a Mac or Apple user, not endorsing the product by any means, but that's where you can go in and, and, and leave a review let us know uh, if this podcast uh, was helpful or beneficial and, and leave a comment subscribe to it so you can be updated um, on new episodes and check out um, Sharon's Facebook community as well and her podcast and that's all going to be uh, in the show notes as well Sharon again thank you for coming in to our listeners um, thank you as well and until next time stay well